And the Queen is such a statement and she's been on the throne for 70 years. It's a long time on the toilet, right? <laughs> My confidence in this recipe is starting to go downhill. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen. Today we are doing something, uh, there's a Queen's Jubilee coming up, right? It's the Queen's 70th Jubilee. She's been on the throne for 70 years. Platinum Jubilee, oh my gosh. There was a competition to design the Queen's official Jubilee dessert for the platinum thing, right? It was this person here, Gemma Malvin. Look, she's very happy with her lemon trifle. This Swiss roll, we've got like this coolie going on, mandarin cream, white chocolate with Jewels on, which is actually just citrus fruit, but it's very lemony infused. It's gonna take us a blooming long time. The ingredients were quite expensive. Yeah, like we're making the Swiss roll. You can buy a Swiss roll for like 60p at the moment rather than baking one, which is quite full on anyway. So we're gonna get all the baking out of the way. Amaretto biscuits as well. You can buy them in a pack. We're gonna make our own. <laughs> but if you don't know what a trifle is, it's kind of like a jelly cream fruity stack thing. Very, very traditional here in the UK. I once made a Jagerbomb one dressed as an old lady. That was hilarious. Oh, the first thing to do is to grab some strawberries like this. But I actually feel like the most un-British person in the world right now. This um, is not even mine. This is my mother-in-law's, uh, this is a candle holder. And I thought, wow, that would make a good trifle bowl because the only thing we have is plastic, so not very see-through, or it was just a mixing bowl. So I'm gonna make it in this, which generally has actual candle wax still in it. I will clean that out, but um, thank you, Leslie and Dick, for the candle holder slash trifle holster. Let's get going. We are gonna start by making a Swiss roll. We've got four eggs, get them in here. Now we add in the sugar. Oh, beautiful. Look how fluffy and bubbly that is. We're gonna shove in some self-raising flour. You just wanna try and keep as much of that air in as you can. So we just fold through, like lift. So we kept those bubbles in there. And again, I am probably the most un-British British person right now. I don't have a Swiss roll tin. As long as you've got like a lipped 20 by 30 centimeter rectangular tin, uh, this will be fine. Make sure it's greased and lined and cut another piece of baking parchment the same size or maybe slightly bigger for in a minute. So now it's kind of like a little game where you tip it to cover it. There is this perception that as a British person, I know a lot about the monarchy, but what I found actually, a lot of Americans in the nicest way, you guys know more about the monarchy than, well, than me. It is thin, I can see some of the baking parchment, but that is okay. We'll see this thing in about 10 minutes. So this is that baking parchment I was talking about that is cut slightly larger uh, than the tray itself. Randomize it up because a hot sponge will go on there pretty much now. Oh yeah. Gently peel off the parchment. And if you just use the curvature of the rolling pin to get that as tight as you can. And it's really important to do this step whilst it's warm. I learned that the hard way the first time I made a Swiss roll. And then you sit it on the seam like that. Yeah, you see that? Nice and rolled like that, so it's gonna cool in that shape to make it easier to know that it's a roll and not a flat rectangular piece of thin cake, which is still good, it's still cake. So next we'll keep baking and make the amaretto biscuits. Basically like an almond infused naughty egg white biscuit. No, these are the ingredients. This is some almonds. These are ground almonds that I bought. I didn't actually check to see if whole almonds or chopped almonds if, could be cheaper, but you just whiz them up in a blender if you want. Two egg whites, so that's an egg I've separated. I've kept the yolks just in case we might need them for the custard, I don't know. We're doing a custard. Uh, and of course, Amaretto uh, is genuine alcohol. I think it's Disarano is the main brand, but this one was like a quarter of the price and it literally said Amaretto on it. I don't drink it that often. But if you don't want to get the alcohol, I'd imagine you can get like almond flavoring and almond extract, or maybe just omit it and make egg white biscuits. Yeah. The first thing we do is take our chilled egg whites, whip it up till stiff Tim Peaks appears. All right, look, stiff Tim Peaks, the astronaut. Sorry, Tim. I know that you watch the videos. Dun, 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 dun. Make some sugar. That's a lot of sugar, blimey. Then the almonds, apparently. So I'm kind of going by this recipe now. Again, we don't want to deflate it too much, so we're going to fold it through. Don't actually use almond extract. I mean, you're using ground almonds. If you want to avoid the alcohol part, which I'm about to do. Oh, yeah. A little sweet, but... I still got a kick, yeah. You don't have to. You've got enough almonds in that already, but the almond extract, if you want, I've got to put that away or we're going, no, I haven't, I've got to put it in there. 
Yeah, just a teaspoon of that. Quick mingle to fold that through. So baking parchment or a seal pattern, it says just to get some small heaps and uh, well, just place them like that. They should expand actually with the uh, egg white in there for sure. So we'll put them fairly spread apart. No. Alrighty. Right, I've got six minutes left whilst that's baking away. It's smelling amazing and they have puffed up already just trying to get them a bit golden brown. We need 80 ml of uh, lemon juice. So I've got this awesome gadget. Ugh. I was just thinking, hang on a sec, we haven't actually done anything lemony yet, but finally we are. And there's lots of orange as well. So it's quite a citrusy trifle. Oh, hey Boston, how are you doing mate? You okay? Yeah? Okay, back to bed. So whilst that water simmers, we have got some uh, butter, lemon juice, egg yolks, sugar, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, puggy puggy, and the zest of one more lemon, okay? This is an unwaxed lemon. So Mr. Miyagi, this is not a wax on lemon, this is a wax off. Beautiful. There is one minute left to go on that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, this water is just about to simmer. I'm gonna stick that bowl down. We do really need to keep our eye on it, yeah? But I was looking at these, they're looking and smelling great. And I'm thinking, have I made these before? I haven't. They remind me of macaroons, which are made with coconut rather than the almond. I'm pretty certain that's what they remind me of, but they're like sort of toasted. Do not confuse macaroons with macarons. They are the neon uh, brightly colored things, which look awesome. Or also Macron, which is the current French president. Yeah. Oh, they're nice and lightly golden brown. Leave them to cool fully. This is just personal preference though. For me, now the oven is off for this entire recipe. I wanted to get all the heat done, you know, whilst our Swiss roll is cooling, these are cooling over to our custard and I nearly burnt my arm. Yes, yeah, so we kind of got like that bain marie set up. We do actually need to constantly whisk this. As it breaks down, it will thicken. And then we keep whisking it for a solid 15 minutes. So yeah, I can't really divert from this. I am dedicating the next 15 minutes of my life. My whole life, 15 minutes is gonna be lost whisking custard. That's what I'm gonna do. But for you, I'm just gonna jump. But actually at the same time, how many minutes of your life have you wasted watching my videos? Just think about that. But I appreciate that. Thank you. See you in 15 minutes. I'm going to have a yoga pop. Here we go. Uh, so I'm kind of happy with this. We've gone like 10 minutes more than it needed to be. And I also stuck some more amaretto biscuits in the oven, mainly because my arm was killing me. Um, but let's get this into a cool bowl because this is for our Swiss roll. Oh my gosh, that is lovely. I blooming love lemon curd. I was going to do a video on how to make your own homemade lemon curd, but um, I guess we just did. It stays like today that other than having Pat in the background, the queen cardboard or cow would be good, but I gave that away to a Patreon follower from Denmark, I believe, so she's over there. Anyhow, we're gonna make the jelly now, and bizarrely, the leaf gelatin I bought is platinum gelatin leaves. Spooky. All right, gelatin leaves, they kind of remind me of like a deck of cards. Um, you would not think that this is like jelly, really. Six of these all going in there, and so that's how they are at the moment. By just put them in water for a bit, they will soften up, so we give that about five minutes. Cha-ching! All right, we might as well use that pan from before with a lemon curd for our jelly. In goes our sugar, H2O, and this is a, a, a peel, very appealing, of orange. I'm gonna get about six orange ones and apparently put six lemon ones in as well. We bring this up to a simmer now to dissolve the sugar through. There we go, and because of the sugar in there, that did not take long. I'm gonna take that off the heat. So it has definitely stained the water. It's not as clear as it was. The sugar's dissolved through, but we do wanna uh, fish these strips out. This is the gelatin leaves, and we have to try and squeeze as much water out of it as we can. And it suddenly, actually, to be fair, does feel like jelly. We take our dried leaves, in they go, so it's important that it's still hot, it's just not simmering, because this will help to dissolve it through. Whilst that was simmering away, I squeezed some more lemon and orange juice into this. Okay. Then we get the sieve again and strain it through. Oh wow, just enough, I <laughs> got lucky there, oh wow. No, I didn't get lucky, it's coming out of the spout. Amazing, chill it until it's cool, but not fully set. So uh, I can't put it in the fridge like that, we'll let it room temperature and then get it in there. We've got to move on. We've got to keep going. This is fun though. Scarily fun. Oh my gosh, folks. Um, we are doing the mandarin coolie now, okay, which is tinned mandarins, like sort of orange segments in juice that I've actually drained. You don't need the juice. I've kept it in a jug. We have a nice little drink of that. Uh, that goes with some sugar, and I thought that was it. Apparently, when you go to the steps, it talks about arrowroot and thickening it up. That wasn't in the ingredients. Arrowroot is fairly similar to cornflour, which we tend to have here in the house. 
So I'm just gonna get on with it and then we'll worry about that. If not, I might have to bomb to the shops, but I just wanna get all the warm stuff warmed and then it can cool. Ah! From the madness and excitement of that to tinned mandarins, look at that. So we've apparently warmed this up in this saucepan. I'm just gonna dissolve the sugar through and warm it till they're broken down. So that's kind of it. We don't want them to completely sort of perish and bubble away. We're not making a marmalade. There we go, that's simmering and warm and mushy. We'll take that off the heat. Your recipe may call for arrowroot powder because it's often used as a substitute for cornstarch, aka corn flour, that works for people with corn allergies. Didn't know that. Corn flour provides that nice glossy shine like, just like arrowroot powder. Corn flour or cornstarch is a one-for-one one arrowroot starch substitute. Let's risk it. Stir the arrowroot with two tablespoons of cold water to make a paste. Then add to the warm mandarins. Pour that in there. And some lemon juice, that's the juice of half lemon. Stirry, stirry, stirry. <laughs> it kind of looks like cornflakes in milk. Add in the other tins of mandarins and we just leave this to cool completely, apparently. All right. Folks, my confidence in this recipe is starting to go downhill. That website I've completely ditched because it doesn't, it gives you the ingredients for the, the main custard, uh, which we'll start, we'll just start doing it now. I found another website um, that has the steps for everything. <laughs> What worries me is this step involves some corn flour, which we've just used instead of the arrowroot. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we'll just give this a stirry, stirry, stirry whilst it warms up. And we need the hot cream to start working with these other ingredients, which we'll switch to over here. Sugar, egg yolks, the corn flour, and also it's calling for lemon extract. All right, that's pretty cool. Now back to the cream. I'm there just quickly looking at the recipe. I look around and it's just simmered over. Look at that. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's simmering. Get the camera ready. Grab my phone just to make sure that I'm doing the steps right. I'm so confused what's going on. And then the froth is just, yeah. But what we've got to do is slowly introduce that cream in with that other mixture, whisking it through like that. And then it will go back to the pan to warm again. And I'm gonna have to try and cook it over this side. I feel like this recipe is getting everything really, really warm and angry and then just letting it cool. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're whisking it over the heat again. This should thicken up into the custard that we will just uh, let calm down. Oh, there we go. Nice and thickened up. Into a jug. Oh, that smells stonking. That is definitely lemon custard. Again, leaving it to chill. And I've just found another boo-boo. Yes, unfortunately, this other recipe that I'm now following, which has all of the ingredients and conveniently all of the method, at the bottom says to assemble 600 ml of double cream. Fantastic. So I've got one more thing I can do that I can get going and leave to set whilst I go to the shop to get the cream to assemble, and that will be most of it done. Because apart from whipping the cream that I didn't realize I needed to do a minute ago and basically building my Swiss roll and ultimately the trifle, this is some white chocolate that I've just melted we sprinkle in some mixed peel. So basically sort of sugared lemon and orange. I don't know if this is very common in other countries, but anyhow, that is that. We just snap that into shards once it's set, which is what it'll do once they go to the shops and get some cream. <laughs> got myself the cream, also got myself a cheeky little sandwich for lunch and uh, some tin dog food for Boston. Cottage pie. Also had a clean down and that chocolate has set already. So I think we'll roll back to the, oh, hey, that was no pun intended. The Swiss roll, uh, we're gonna put the curd inside that. Do, 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 do. When you do this, be careful of the sugar. <laughs> Completely forgot the rolling pin was in there. Like, what the heck is that? And look at this lemon curd from earlier. Look how much that's thickened up. Amazing. And then we just try to get that as tight as we can and just steadily roll through. And that's our lemon curd twist roll. Oh, I'm not sure actually. This bowl, this is the one that I made the uh, biscuits in earlier. It looks much more like bowly because <laughs> it is a bowl, but that's sort of the capacity a trifle dish would normally be. Hey ho. What I tend to find is best, I'm gonna take some quite thin strips, is if you kind of like go down with the sharpest point of the knife just to give you an initial sort of incision, you get pretty good pieces. Oh yeah, I might only have enough room to put one base piece in and then we layer it around there to be able to give us enough room to show, well, all the other layers. Yeah, see I've stuck another one there, it looks massive. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that just ain't working in there for me. I don't like the look of that. We're gonna run out of room fast. Uh, I'm gonna clean out the mixing bowl. <laughs> we'll 
to serve it in one of them. Do you know what? I'll actually take that. I'm quite happy with that. And we need to kind of bring it flush with the rest of it, okay? Just gonna press it in a little bit. All right, okay. Right, so this is the St. Clement's jelly, uh, which we chilled, and it is, you can see, can you see it's sort of like half set, half not? Come on, my friend. Oh, get in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I think we've still got to get three more bands in there. Oh. <laughs> Supposed to leave that set for three hours before we continue assembling it, but I think that's fairly well set anyway, so I'm gonna probably let it stand for about an hour. All right, no pressure. This is all the other ingredients that have got to go on there. We've got a custard amaretti, we've got the mandarin coolie, the cream, and the bark shardy white chocolate thing. Um, let's go for it. So here goes our custard. Quite a thin layer on here, folks, just so I can show them on the sides of the dish. My jelly set in the jug initially a little bit too much, so it's formed I mean, a lovely base there, but some of it should seep more into the sponges, so I'm a little higher than I should be, which is why yours will look better than mine, if you want to try it. Okay, so I made uh, the amaretti biscuits. That actually is going to sit nicely in that custard. Oh, wow. And by the way, in terms of portions, this serves one queen, by the way. And now next, it's this chilled coolie thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that looks fantastic. And then the cream comes along and kind of like encases it all in. Blimey. Crumble over some reserved amaretti biscuits. I'm doing like a mixture of like really fine crumbs, but then also like actual big crispy chunks of the baked bits. Yeah, baby. Look at, that is insane. Look at this beast. All right, let's shove some white chocolate in it. I wasn't expecting it to be like this, but I feel like this is up there with one of the coolest things that I have potentially ever made, like visually. There's a lot going on. That looks absolutely incredible. I've got to be honest, after all the hoo-ha of should I use a trifle bowl or not, this is just, it's not just a mixing bowl. This is my mix. It's fine, isn't it? Ah, I'm so proud of this. I have made a meal fit for a queen, so it's only fitting some of the queens in my house try it. Is that a bit cheesy? Uh, I just thought of that. No, I'm the queen and the princess. <laughs> Does that make me? The king! I feel like a blooming butler. It has had two hours chill time. Oh my gosh! Wow, really? <laughs> so is it a lemon trifle? Yeah. Oh, there's so much going on. Oh my goodness, I can see at the bottom there's like Swiss roll. Yeah, that's a homemade lemon Swiss roll. Wow. There's homemade lemon curd. What's There's a lemon custard. Oh There's loads of stuff going on. This must have taken you all day. It did. Is it apricots on there? White um, chocolate. that's like citrus fruit, caramelised like little um, oh zest. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. like peel. Let's just go right down. Oh my gosh, into the jelly. I'm gonna try and get a bit of everything. A bit of everything. That's a good idea. <laughs> Mm. It definitely doesn't need the lemon curd in the cream. Yeah. It doesn't, does it? That is really citrusy. Mmm. The white chocolate is kind of like a nice little appetizer at the end of it. It just goes like, yes, the lemon is done now. That's so good. Yeah, it's just good, isn't it? I'll tell you what, do you want to just try one of these amaretto biscuits? Just have a little bite of that. Oh, they remind me of macaroons. Do they? Yeah. That's what I said. It's oh. cool, isn't it? Well, there we go. What an absolute whopper. What a beast. Um, and for the Queen's Jubilee in the UK, there's lots of things going on. I think we're going to go to a fate. Queens, did that appease you? And did it satisfy your taste buds? It's delicious. Mm. Yeah, I think it was... my tongue twickle. Twickle? Oh, I mean twickle. <laughs> All right. I think it's a really cool thing to make. And, mm. you know, perhaps the jelly, it said to let it chill in the fridge. When I was pouring it out, I was like, wow, that's set. So it's halfway there. But if it was a little looser, it would have settled into the Swiss roll, gave me more chance to have other layers like that. But um, I think it's blooming stonking. It's amazing. Blooming well, stonking. Well done. All right, congrats to the Queen on 70 years. We'll see her in 10 years for 80 years or whatever. Should be 106 then. Hello VE is how you spell food Gonna make some truffles to get you in the mood To me your support is smooth as silk When I have my cereal I pour on milk If you got a food mixer give it a whirl I gotta let you know I'm still cooking in love with you girl There's one little British thing to say isn't there? Every grandma that I know of generally If you go around their house you just pop in by to say hello Not for an occasion, not for a birthday, anything like that They always have a trifle in their fridge <laughs> They're like, I've just, I just quickly made a trifle, have it. Like, your nan <laughs> for that doing. is absolutely nuts. It's like, 
I just rustled up a trifle. <laughs> and it's like, as you can see from this beast, it's not something that takes like two minutes to make. It's absolutely like, it's just, it's a, it's a, nan, yeah. it's a nan thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> all nans love trifle as a t-shirt or something <laughs> so if you want to be british for a day just make a trifle this one's optional there's easier ones and no jaeger bombs allowed so let's have a taste and i'll see you again next time